welcome to the Squirrel Tale. Today, with Christmas coming up, I'm going to do a slightly different video on how to make Squirrel Saw Christmas ornaments. Now, you know, if you're like me, you know, you have a scroll saw, which can be a very useful tool for things like muzzlers. It can be handy to have, um, you know, a little handy saw. And also, it's a great way to make Christmas ornaments. That way, when you buy yourself the brand new rifle for Christmas, your lady might not say as much to you. You know, stuff like that. And in general, they can be nice decorations. Here's two I made, a manger scene. Um, a snowman. These are real easy to do if you have a scroll saw, a pine board. Um, now, the first thing you need is a pattern. Now, one option is you can buy books. This is Wildlife Patterns for the Scroll Soul by Lauren S. Irish. Again, you can go, you know, Amazon, eBay, whatever, buy your... You can buy books that have patterns. Also, you can get stuff online. But with any of this stuff, be aware of copyright laws. If you are making a business, making scroll saw items and you're using other people's designs and you don't give them credit and you're making a bunch of money you could get yourself in trouble so just consider that I'm not an expert on that matter but the other option is to make your own pattern you now if you're good with CAD and all that other stuff or SolidWorks and Photoshop you probably don't need to watch this part of the video, but I'm gonna... Now, this is what the patterns that look on the book are in. These are kind of bigger, not really Christmas ornaments, but... Again, you can photo that, you can trace them onto paper. I think it gives instructions on... Uh... Yeah, it says you can, you know, they can be, um, different, you know, they, you can photocopy these and use them. But I'm gonna, I'm doing a relatively simple ornament for this video. So I'm gonna start by taking the piece of paper, folding it in half. I'm just gonna do a cross. Like a little cross, something simple that'll look good on the Christmas tree. Um, you know, I, there's hundreds of patterns. Now I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do a teardrop shape. So I fold it in half. So I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna bring it around like this. Yeah, sure, I'm in a good. And do kind of do a teardrop shape like this. And then I'm going to carefully. Come around, try to, and this is kind of doing some eyeballing, run as parallel as I can to the base. Now the reason I'm folding is because a cross is inherently a symmetrical thing, so it's going to be a symmetrical ornament. So, now you gotta consider with the cross, um, I want to roughly be how thick I want it to be. So, the thickness of the wood, 
or of the beams that I cross. For this section here, I want to be roughly half of what I want it to be. You could get in with here with a ruler if you were worried and you know, think okay I want to want it to be uh, you know 3 8 so I'm gonna draw this at 3 16 again you could do that if you wanted I'm kind of doing the eyeball and seeing how it looks method Okay, so now I got one side. So now I need to get the other side, which is going to be a little bit tricky because that's not really dark. Um, so to trace it, what I might be able to do is. using my phone okay let me see what screen to go in so I'm not calling people I'll go to clock stopwatch very little I can do on this screen though so now I can see This, the ideal thing to do would be a lay piece of clear plastic down and trace the pattern out, but I don't have that luxury. If I did this right, there we go. Just like that, I got a viable usable pattern that looks pretty good. Uh, the only thing I see really, you know, I might go through and correct some of these lines, but you know, just to make it a little more symmetrical, but that should do what I need to do. Okay, the other thing I like to do with making a pattern is I like to first, I'm not gonna cut it all the way out. I wanna cut pretty darn close it doesn't have to be perfect but that way I can lay it when I'm looking for the piece of wood to use you know I know roughly what I'm working with um So, the next thing is prepping the wood. Now, you want to take your pattern and realize where the best place to cut it out at. You know, I'm starting out for wood. I'm using pine. It cuts easy. Poplar is another good option. And actually, a lot of people use 8th inch plywood. Or not 8th inch, but like half inch, 3 sixteenths plywood. And that works great too. So I'm using a pine board that I'd plane down to eh, between half and I would say about seven sixteenths, roughly. I didn't actually measure it. I'm like, yeah, that looks good. 
I know the machinist in me should be ashamed, but now you want to obviously be efficient with your wood because it can be an expensive resource potentially, especially nowadays. So uh, obviously cutting it out here in the middle of the board would be stupid. Now in this case, I have a crack. And I'm gonna work around that crack. And I have a little mark there, so I'm gonna come up a little bit from that. And I'm gonna put it right in this section. Now that's all chipped up, so no good. So that's, this section here is where I'm gonna put it. Also, the end of this has more cracks, which I don't want it. Another thing when laying these patterns out is you want to look at the grain and which way would be the strongest. Now in this case, most of the features are long ways. So I want to lay it this way because that means the grain's going to be going this way, giving it the most strength. If I laid it like this, where the grain is going this way, it's going to be very brittle and break. So you want most of your long features to go with the grain. First thing I'm going to do in regards to prepping the wood. Like I said, with that crack, I'm, I'm being the most efficient with the wood possible. I make a couple more ornaments out of that side. But what I'm going to start doing is sanding it. I have my little palm sander here. Any palm sander will work. If you do this before you cut it out, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so that's pretty good. So the board's sanding. The next thing I'm going to do is cut the board. So, you know, I'm going to roughly cut out what I'm going to use. So. Because uh, I've already determined this area down here is kind of rough. So right here I should mark that with a pencil, but... Also be mindful of knots. You don't want to knot. That can create a weak spot. You know, right at a joint or something. So, obviously trying to cut out a little design with a board this big would be rough. So I'm going to take the first cut on my scroll saw. So I have my blade on. That might be another video I do just on basics of the scroll saw. But make sure your teeth are down your blade. Make sure you remember to drop this at the thickness of your board. And obviously, like any time, eye protection, all that jazz. and um, Make sure you're... Teeth are always down with a scroll saw blade or you won't be able to control it. And then make sure you plug the machine in because then you need power to cut things. No. 
normally I wouldn't do that, but because the wood's cracked, that works. So you turn the machine on. Hey, Blue, say hi to the camera. And then you take your puppy dog, and you let the puppy dog say hello to the camera. You always need a puppy dog when working. Makes things go so much easier. So, again, normally, I wouldn't have to make another cut that way, but because of the crack, I didn't have to do that, so. The next step is tracing the pattern on the board. So, the next thing to do is put the pattern on the board. Um, so what I find the easiest thing to use is graphite paper, carbon paper, I believe the name, tracing paper. It's black on one side. Um, relatively inexpensive. So I lay that on the board. <coughs> And I lay the pattern where I want it. And then a couple pieces of tape to hold it on so it stays still. Now I will say the more you know taping, don't just put a little bit of tape, a couple pieces. You don't want it to move. I'll even say fold it over. Some people say, oh, you don't want to do this because then you can't see it. I want to move that over to the right a little bit. You'll make sure the pattern's actually on the board. It's easier to tape it, actually it's probably easiest to tape it on without the carbon paper. That way you can see what you're doing. That's gonna be entirely on there. You know, you don't want one edge to be off. Another thing you can do is to make sure you keep it centered is to have a couple reference marks like that with the pen onto the wood. And I'm going to bring in this piece of paper. Bring it up like this and I think I'm going to put one more piece of tape. So something to that effect. And then I'm going to take, now I'm using a red pen because I can clearly see my pattern. And I'm going to go around and just trace the pattern I drew. Then you do, to make sure it goes on good, do want to put a little bit of pressure on it. <laughs> you alright, Blue? You alright, buddy? Okay, you're good. Make sure everything is traced on. And before you entirely untape it, it's always a good idea... Especially if you have a more complicated pattern. To verify that you got everything. So I take this one piece of tape off. And pick it up. And as you can see, I got now have the pattern on the wood. So 
and now I'm ready to start preparing to cut. Okay, one more thing on the pattern. It's not always gonna be perfect. So going through with an eraser and a pencil to kind of spruce up some of the lines to make them look better can go a long way in helping it look good. So, you know, something simple like that can really make it look a lot better. Now, one thing I want to discuss is now you guys, if you guys are a follow the channel or watch some of my other videos you know i have a pretty decent shop set up in a pretty you know nice work area but if you notice i'm not in the shop today this week due to my car being in the garage i'm at the girlfriend's and i brought some tools to work on it here so i'm on an old I guess kitchen table, coffee table. Um, and I'm, I have my scroll saw. Now I just looked on Harbor Freight. You can get a scroll saw for $109. Um, I have the sander. You can probably find them for 20 bucks. Maybe, give or take. I do have a drill press. And then the belt sander that I'm going to use a little bit. But you really don't need all that stuff. You really need this girl saw, drill some files and sandpaper, and you're good to go. Which, the next step in this process is to drill the holes for um, to get the blade in to do the internal cuts. And normally I do this on my drill press because I have one. But today I'm going to mix it up and do it on the hand drill. Again, just a common hand drill. Most households should have one of these. And a drill bit, just a common drill bit. And these holes are just there to get the blade in to do the internal cut. too fast you don't want to splinter it out but that gives you the holes and that gives me the ability to cut it out so normally a little note when doing internal cuts on a scroll saw the more you take out the weaker it gets so there's two different logics. You can do the outside and then do the internals or vice versa. I think I'm going to cut the outside out first. Only small notice. Normally, I guess I don't notice this with the draw press is bad. If you have it sticking out in the back, it won't fly right. So... <laughs> Two seconds with sander takes care of that. So I'm going to do the outside first.
Now, I know the better you cut, the less sanding you have to do. That blade's getting dull, and I ain't cut it as good as I did, wanted to. But that's when a sander is hugely important. I know what I should have the guard on. I don't know where the guard got to, but I should have it on. Always put guards on your machines. And try to clean up the edges a little bit. Okay, so now the outside of that looks pretty good. So now I'm ready to do the internal cuts. So like I said, when I was cutting that one, I felt the blade was kind of dull. So I'm going to now change the blade. The one that I feel should be a little newer. Now with scroll saw blades, there's two different types, pinless and pin. Pins are a little easier to work with. But you can't get as small as nook and crannies. Um, now for the internal cuts, you just you can make sure the teeth are down. Weave the blade through the hole. I always say the bigger hole is the better. Obviously, though, if you have a feature that's tiny, you need a smaller hole. And that's when the pinless blades come in handy. But then they're hold, held by set screws, so... That makes them very, you know, a lot harder to deal with. And I guess this is unplugged. So.
So the next thing I'm going to do is mark where I want the drill for the ribbon so you can hang it on the tree. So I'm going to put that mark there. And I'm going to keep using the hand drill. One thing though I find useful is to take something sharp to mark it. Some sort of point. Again, drill. That way you're not splintering the wood too bad. And then there you go. You have a ribbon to hang it. Next thing to do is sand. The next thing to do is sand. Now, I'll first hit anything up with this sander that I need. And then, I'll take a files and kind of take out any tool marks. I already did this. I didn't realize I was recording. That's why I'm kind of not. Putting a small vise can be helpful. And then, honestly, getting in there with some hand sandpaper can really make a difference. Just going through there, getting rid of any saw marks. Anything ugly. Now that I have it sanded pretty good, it's now time for finishing. So the last thing you gotta do besides attaching a ribbon is put on stain. Now when I put on stain, I like to, I'm just using linseed oil. There's piles of different finishes. But if you're using an oil finish, these steps are more or less gonna apply. Now to get inside the cracks, I like to use a Q-tip. And go inside this. You could also use a small paintbrush, really wouldn't matter. Well, you know, Q-tips are cheap and, you know, available. I just like to take a paper towel. Get it nice and oily. Hello. And then I oil the outside of the ornament. And after you oil the outside of the ornament, it's ready to dry and again you just have to add additional coats of oil until it's dry and let it dry and then it'll be ready to hang on the tree oh and when you're hanging it after you put finish you don't want to lay it down or part of it won't dry you do want to hang it over there there's some pegs I can hang this ornament on but yeah, I gave it a good coat. I'll probably put two or three more coats on it. So, now it's ready to dry. Okay, so... 
Now that I have a couple coats of oil, Lindsay Royal or whatever your preferred finishing method is, uh, that's not my expertise. I know I do gun stocks good and this always seems to function, but everyone has their preferred method. Um, now one thing that's cool to do is lightly go over the edges with a torch like I did with this bear I made. Time to give some cool coloration. You can even get in there with wood burners and or paint. You can paint stuff or do it with a combination like I don't know if you can see, but that has the dog's name on it. And then it's oil finish. But the last thing I gotta do is add a little bit of string to it. So what I'm gonna do is just take some ribbon. Take a section of ribbon. Trim that. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory, but... Do my best to tie a knot in the... And then, you can trim the tail if you want, but... That seems pretty good. Then you come over on your tree. You find an area that's not too busy. You hang up your ornament. Then there you go. Or if you're giving it as a gift, you can wrap it, whatever. So, obviously it's kind of intended as a Christmas video. Um. So... I do wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, you know, if you're not, um, if you're watching at a different time, I hope it's good whatever's going on right now and everything's good, but have a good Christmas this year and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider liking and subscribing. You know, if you want more scroll soft content, I can do it. It's kind of different than the muzzleloader content I normally do, but I, you can see with the bear, do have quite a bit of experience making stuff, so, um, hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good day, bye. Say bye, Blue. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe for more great content, and check out our Instagram page at, at Squirrel Tail Show.